At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Johnny Isbell, Mayor of City of Pasadena, to come up and to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the City of Pasadena and welcome all chamber members. Is there anyone in the audience today that uh, hasn't been introduced? <laughs> Hold your hand up just a minute. Hold, let's give them a hand. <laughs> Gosh, it's good to see my fellow colleagues, mayors and council members uh, here. We, mayors and council members, since we're kind of all colleagues, y'all stand up again just a minute. Come on, Lewis. Y'all stand up. You've never been bashful before. <laughs> Holy cow. The mayors and council members, these are our colleagues. You have no idea what they go through uh, and what I have to do to put up with them. But I kid, I kid you about that because we all get along great. Uh, they, they do a great job in their cities and, and they help us and we work together and it's the best group of mayors I've ever seen here. But uh, let me just say what an honor it is for me today to uh, have the pleasure and the honor of introducing Precinct 2 Commissioner Jack Mormon. Wow, that sound good? Harris County Precinct 2 Commissioner Jack Mormon. Sounds great. It sounds great. Andy, you're right. Uh, Jack was sworn in in uh, 2011 and was reelected in 2014 <coughs> with no opponent. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I've had an opponent every time I've run for any office and uh, I guess it's my magnetic personality. <laughs> but uh, what an honor it is to introduce you again, Jack. Five years has already made a tremendous, tremendous impact on our communities, all the mayors here. And the evidence, if you look, is all around you. You see major road improvements. You see new parks, more programs and events in everywhere you look. Jack, I don't know how you do all this. I mean, you've got a million people in your district, but good Lord, you have put together one heck of a team, I'll tell you that, and uh, they're all great. Precinct 2 is home to 15 cities. And I believe the commissioner works just as hard for each and every one of them every day. He's also responsible, get this, y'all have heard this before, but you need to hear it again, 1,300 miles of roadways. Not enough of them in Pasadena. 50 parks, 17 community centers, holy cow, Washburn Tunnel and the Lynchburg Ferry. Jack, I really don't know how you do that. It's a big job, but it's one that you can tell when you talk to him. He clearly has passion for that, for that job. I want to take this public announcement to uh, pledge my support, and I believe all the other mayors do, to you, Jack, for the great dedication you have for all of our communities. And like I say, there's more of a million people live in Precinct 2, and I think your leadership and your partnership with all the cities, and I know in Pasadena, you have helped us expand our improvements uh, infrastructure by co-opting with us and uh, we pay an equal share that way we get twice the bang for the buck thank you for that again and i know you've made life better for, for all of us and now it is my pleasure to introduce the man that i call our project partner and i call my close personal friend harris county commissioner precinct 2 jack mormon Okay, it's been five years and I still don't get along with microphones, so let me know if you can't hear me, but thank you, Mayor, for that introduction. It's been great working with you, the city of Pasadena, over these past five years. We've done some wonderful things, not only for Pasadena, but all of East Harris County. It's been a pleasure working for you and with you. Let me also thank the Deer Park, Pasadena, South Belt Ellington, South Houston, LaPorte Bayshore, and Clear Lake Area Chambers of Commerce for hosting us today. Let's give them a big hand. 
And of course, a special thanks to Christina Womack of the Pasadena Chamber and Tammy Nielsen in my office for all of their hard work in hosting us today in this wonderful stage. Give them a big round of applause. Well, it's great to see all of the good mayors here today. That's one of the best things about being a commissioner in Precinct 2 is the opportunity to work with all the mayors and know that a project in one city helps the residents of another. If there's one thing I've learned about representing East Harris County and the million residents that I get to represent, it's that we all have to stand together because if we don't, then someone else will run us over. There are twice as many cities in Precinct 2 as any other Harris County precinct we have all or part of 15 cities, and I enjoy each and every one of them. And there are two people in the legislature that we can always count on to represent our area. That's Representatives Dennis Paul and Wayne Smith. Without a doubt, they are outstanding conservatives, and I can't tell you how many times that I've called on Wayne when I needed some help, whether it's from overweight trucks or transportation funding for our area, and he's come through every single time. Thank you, Wayne. And of course, yes, absolutely. And of course, we have 99% of the ship channel and all of the Port of Houston. So I wanna recognize the Port Commissioners here with us today for doing a great job. By any measure, revenue, ships, tonnage, port business is at an all-time high. That's no accident. It is because we have an outstanding port commission. It's led by Chairman Janice Longoria for the past two and a half years, and I'm particularly proud of our Harris County appointees, Clyde Fitzgerald and Colonel John Kennedy. And of course, the small cities next to the channel and Mayor Isabel have made great selections themselves and Mayor Stephen Don Carlos and Roy Meese. We have, for the first time in history, four port commissioners, all from East Harris County, and a chairman who knows her way around East Harris County. Of course, Chairman Longoria is up for reappointment at the end of this year. I'll tell you right now, she already has my vote and my support. But after that, after she's term limited, I think it's time that we have a chairman from our own backyard, from East Harris County. So that's what I'll be working on in the next couple of years. Would you please join me in a round of applause for our port commissioners here today? Before I leave the port, I want to talk about one more thing, and that's how fortunate we are to be home to San Jacinto College. And they have a new home where they are training and educating thousands of future maritime workers at the port. This investment on their part is just one more reason that their board and executive leadership is outstanding as compared to anyone in the United States. Thank you, Sanjak, for all that you do. As I said earlier, it's been five years since my swearing in, so I think it's a good time to take a step back and see how far we've come. You may be tired of hearing about it, but I'm gonna tell you again. When we came in in 2011, we faced a severe budget crisis in Precinct 2. The precinct was spending millions more than it was taking in, and something had to be done. Starting off, we laid off 25% of our workforce, that's about 100 people. I'm told I'm the only commissioner in history who's had to take such drastic measures. But the employees who stuck with us did a fantastic job. They pulled together, worked harder than ever, and took a great amount of pride in their public service. The ferry kept running, the Washburn Tunnel never closed, and our 50 parks were open every single day. That is, that's the reason that I've asked a few of them to be here today so they can be recognized for all of their hard work. These are the folks that filled our potholes, cleaned our parks, and kept our community centers open and running for our youth and our seniors. So, I'm gonna introduce some of our folks here with us today. From Roden Bridge, we've got Domingo Lopez, Chris Parkey, Dustin Hamaker, and Robert Mitchell. In Parks, Cosme Rodriguez and Eric Stevens. And from Community Centers, Elizabeth Williams and Malcolm Barrett. Guys, stand up, come on. Thank you, these are the folks that do the hard work every single day. Thank you team, thank you for all that you do. And that leads me to some of our most important projects and the person I'm trusting to make those projects happen. That happens to be the director of the Harris County Toll Road Authority, Gary Treese. Gary, stand up. Let's give him a big hand. And this is why you just gave him a big hand. Gary's in charge of designing and building the new Ship Channel Bridge and the East Belt expansion from I-45 to 225. 
That's about a billion and a half dollars of design and construction work. But first, let me tell you what Gary's been doing in the interim to get us through to that point. He led the conversion to easy tag only on the bridge, which seems to be working better than anyone ever expected. The daily congestion of three to four hours each and every day is gone. It's a thing of the past, and I don't have to tell you how important that is. <laughs> Gary will complete the design work of the bridge in about a year, will begin construction on that bridge in the fall of next year, and in four years or so, you will be driving on a new bridge. It'll have four lanes in each direction instead of two, 12-foot wide lanes instead of 10, and two emergency lanes in each direction. A big consideration for the design of this new bridge was safety. The new design will take the bridge supports out of the channel in order to avoid any collisions, however remote there might be. So counting the approaches, we're looking at a cost north of $900 million, but we'll have a bridge that could last 100 years or more. So I'll be driving on it when I'm 137 or so, <laughs> assuming Andy lets me and I can find the car keys. So. But that's not all we've been doing, the bridge and the beltway. After many years of planning, we're halfway through construction on Sins Road in Laporte. It's a $25 million project, which I'm told makes it the most expensive road project in Precinct 2 history on a per mile basis. But when we're through, we'll have four lanes from Fairmont to 225, which will reduce congestion on other roads and provide transportation alternatives throughout the region. Randolph, Fairmont, Garner are all examples of the great partnership that we have with the city of Pasadena. Some of these projects will be program programmed out over the next few years, but represent nearly $20 million in shared construction value and roadway improvements. So we've talked a lot about Laporte, Pasadena, but let's not forget about our other South Channel cities that have benefited from roadway and drainage improvements valued at over $23 million. South Houston, Shore Acres, Morgan's Point, Seabrook, and Deer Park are all currently benefiting from road improvements initiated by Precinct 2. Don't worry, mayors, yes, more is coming. And for the Clear Lake part of Houston, we've had initial discussions with Councilman Dave Martin and his team about joining up for some road improvement projects that we hope will begin very shortly. No project's too small. Each one leaves a positive impact on the residents in that area, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. For example, we've completed over a million dollars of trails, sidewalks, and other infrastructure improvements in partnership with the city of Taylor Lake Village. Of course, we finished a ton of work on the approaches to the Washburn Tunnel, inside the tunnel itself as well. The tunnel carries nearly six million cars a year and is vital when there's an accident on one of our other three bridges. And it should be in shape to last another 60 years or so. Another big infrastructure project over the next decade will be the construction of some type of dike to protect the Bay Area and the ship channel from a hurricane storm surge. Any project like this, which will cost billions, requires careful deliberation and analysis. In fact, the Gulf Coast Community Protection and Recovery District has just started public meetings to unveil their preliminary alternatives. They just had a meeting Tuesday in the League City. One of the two alternatives leaves most of our Bay Area communities unprotected. In fact, it probably creates an even bigger storm surge risk. And as it happens, my house and thousands of, thousands of others like it, from Seabrook to Shore Acres, are right in the middle of that. This alternative is called CR number two. Well, CR number two is never going to happen if we all stand together and oppose it. Judge Emmett is the Harris County representative on the district board, and he assures me of that, and I definitely trust his word. Of course, Wayne and, Dave, D Wayne and Dennis are on our side of this issue and will never waver. So, if you've noticed that I've been talking a lot about infrastructure, thank you, that means you're not asleep yet. Um, but my philosophy has been and will always be that infrastructure has to be the top priority of a county commissioner, because nothing else works well without infrastructure to promote economic development, jobs, and quality of life. When you make progress on infrastructure, it increases the opportunity to turn to park improvements and other quality of life issues. This economic growth has allowed Precinct 2 to make significant improvements to our parks and add new parks, such as Partnership Park in Pasadena on Red Bluff, and we are planning significant improvements to Clear Lake and Bay Area Park to go along with the progress that we've made at Sylvan Beach. The popularity of Partnership Park has grown every single day and it will continue to be a great regional park as we make improvements in the future. And we're looking at improvements for our county annexes in Precinct 2 that support great local officials like my friend Constable Phil Sandlin. Phil will be moving into his new offices soon at the Bay Area Annex and he'll finally have a little extra room to operate, which he has deserved for a long, long time. So Phil, it's coming, just wait. And Mike Sullivan, I know you're here, I saw you. I want to thank you once again, Mike, 
for opening the tax office at Kyle Chapman. Give him a hand for that. That would not have happened without, without Mike's hard work, so I, we really do appreciate that here in our community. So there are dozens and dozens of more supporters of Precinct 2 that I could and probably should thank, but your hands are probably sore from clapping already. So I'm gonna wind it down, but there is one more that I got to thank. I want to give a, as Donald Trump would say, huge, huge thank you <laughs> to the voters of Precinct 2 for passing our bond election this past November. Nearly 70% of them okayed road, park, and flood control bonds that we'll spend over the next eight to 10 years to improve East Harris County. They've entrusted Precinct 2 and Commissioner's Court with nearly a billion dollars to spend wisely. And with your help and advice, I intend to meet their standards for infrastructure that is delivered on time and under budget in the years ahead. But your continued support and counsel is key to making that happen. So everyone, once again, thank you for coming. A huge, huge thank you to the, to the chambers that put this on. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, with any luck, I'll have even better news to report next year. Thank you all.